This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. This is the second interview in a row I'm doing with Gareth A. Davis in person. What's going on? We scrap our Zooms anymore. Two and three days, look, we'll Zoom later on. But yeah, we're here, obviously, at the, you can see behind me, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano press conference, high up uh, in the Leadenhall building um, above the city of London. And it's great to be here. And do you know what? It feels really historic. And I love the way the two women carried themselves, so Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor. Well, we'll come on to this fight and uh, Jake Paul's involvement uh, in a second, but let's just go back to the weekend on Cardiff. Um, Eubank Jr. Really cruising the fight with Liam Williams at the start, and then the ending was a bit weird. We, we you know, people at ringside thought Jr. is going to get rid of Liam Williams. That wasn't the case. What did you make of the fight, Gareth? Well, I mean, it was a brilliant performance by Chris Eubank Jr. You can criticise him for the showboating and not closing the show, but he won in dominant fashion. Um, the four knockdowns, obviously, giving him a massive leeway on the three judges' cards. He looked, you'll have heard it a million times since Saturday night, but the sport is about levels, and he showed his level on Saturday night, and he showed uh, that he could better Liam Williams, and I think he showed vast improvements as well. Um, the, the showboating, the goading, that's part of his game. It's part of the Eubank game. It always has been. Remember what his father used to do. So no surprise there. Um, just didn't enjoy the last three minutes. I think he could have put more effort in there and just gone toe-to-toe -to -toe a little bit more. But uh, he marches on and, uh, you know, he now gets to prove whether he really does belong at world or elite level. Uh, but there are definitely improvements there under, under Roy Jones Jr., definitely. And, and himself, of course, what he's done in the last couple of years. Now, afterwards, obviously, everyone was speaking to Kala Sowland, uh, his promoter, about what's next. Golovkin and Murata, Kala has made it clear they are in a contract. At the moment, himself and Wasserman can do nothing with that situation for Chris. So there was two names being spoke about on the night. Uh, Conor Ben put himself out there. Uh, for a social media post and also Mr Billy Joe Saunders was uh, brought up at a press conference. Let's start with the Conor Ben fight. Given the, the weight classes that they're both at, surely that's unrealistic. Eubank would have to come down to 54. Not, not really going to happen, is it? Well, look, Eubank Ben 3 or Ben Eubank 3 as it would be is a massive fight in the UK. Um, yes, they could promote it, but I think it's a couple of years away when Conor is bigger, a little bit older, and when Chris is a bit more depleted physically in terms of his age, so he'll be 35 odd then. Um, but yeah, it's probably doable at light middleweight, I'd say. Really? Um, well, if, 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 if Eubank can make light middle, but it's one of those fights that would generate massive interest, both in the industry from the purists and the fanboys and the fangirls, as well as the mainstream. It, 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 it would, you know, it's historic. So it wouldn't surprise me if it happens. Um, but it's a long way away, it's two years away. But putting those two names uh, together in British sport is fireworks. Um, as far as the golovkin Murata, yep, that, they've got to fight first, of course. Um, but, you know, he could well fight the winner of that. He wants Golovkin. He, he's made no secret of that. I spoke to Chris Eubank Jr. before the fight, and he wants Golovkin. But I think the next fight for him in the UK should be Billy Joe Saunders. I saw your interview, it was on the phone, wasn't it? Yeah. Actually, I didn't see it, I heard it on the phone. Billy Joe Saunders, you got him straight after the fight. And Billy's saying he could fight him with one hand tied behind his back. No, Billy's exact quote was, I said, um, it'd have to be at super middle, Chris would have to come up. Can you still do super middleweight comfortably? And he said, I could do it half dead and still beat Chris Eubank Jr. Well, we don't want him half dead, because that's no good. But I, I mean, I think it's a great fight still. It's going to generate massive interest. Billy Joe Saunders needs a fight to come back from after Canelo, which is going to be a year away by the time they fight. Um, let's get it on. It's a big fight. It's a time of big fights. I suppose Billy's a free agent right now. Uh, he said he's got one fight left with Matchroom in the zone. However, if, if Sky put in an offer, Billy can, I'm sure, can talk to Eddie and that can get done. Um, he wants £5 million for that and he wants to be the A-side for that fight. Well, he, look, he was the victor in the first fight. It was a fantastic fight. We were probably both there. I certainly was. It was uh, years ago now. Love these rematches when they take place later on in the career. Eubanks much improved. It was a close fight in terms of the last six rounds. Billy dominated the first six rounds on that foggy night. I think it was the same card as, um, if, if from memory, it was Tyson Fury and Derek Chisora 2, I think it was, if I'm right. But it was a foggy night at uh, the XL Arena. I hope I'm right with that, but that's what my recollection is. I would love to see that fight again. 
is there's a lot of money in that fight. Eubank is being put out there as a marquee fighter with Boxer and Sky Sports and Wasserman and Sowlands at the moment. Let's get it on. Simple as that. OK, I'm sure you spoke to Eddie Earn today about what's going on with Fury White. Now, it has been a lot of back and forth from Team Fury and, and, and the Warren camp with Hearn and stuff. So what, what's been your been take on that? Obviously, Eddie's brought up some, some potential issues with the fight, like U, uh, Fury's UK licence. Um, and there was a, the WBC deposit thing, which has now been sorted. And then Frank's come out and spoke to the Daily Star and said, you know, I don't know why people are asking Eddie about Fury White. He has nothing to do with the fight. Um, if he wanted to do something with the fight, he should have put in more money and won the bid. So what have you made of this ongoing back and forth? Well, I've had a catch up with Eddie Hearn, the promoter Eddie Hearn today. I spoke to Frank Warren on Saturday for a piece in the Sunday Telegraph as well, and rightly so. I mean, Dillian White is now promoted for this Tyson Fury fight by Queensbury and top rank, Bob Arum and Frank Warren. They won the bid, $41 million. Um, there, that, I, I believe the money is in escrow now, the $4 million. The, 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 the deposit, yeah. yeah. The deposit the, is, is in escrow, so, you know, it's there. Um, no issue with that. I believe we're going to get a press conference, Frank Warren told me, uh, late this week, but I hear there is a few wranglings between the promoters over things that are still outstanding, so it looks like it's going to move even further, but the fight's going to be signed and it is on. Um, what was the other thing you asked? <laughs> I think, did I ask? Um, no, just the, just the back and forth going yeah, on. Look, look, it was the... the Three or four of the biggest names in the sport. They are heavyweights. It's the biggest paydays, the biggest fight nights, the most money generated, the biggest audiences, all outside Canelo, of course. So there was bound to be wrangling. That, 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 that You could not get those people around a table ever. It, it would be war to get them around a table. So um, I'm surprised that um, there weren't more things that were dirty linen aired in public. Like, they all came out, they've all blamed each other. It was Fury's fault, Joshua asked for too much. But at the end of the day, they tried to get it on. It was a bit of a circus, three step aside, it didn't work. We've got the two big fights that we are gonna get now. Eddie Hearns told me you sick, Joshua will be announced in the next couple of weeks. Um, and you know, they're looking at Wembley Stadium, they're looking somewhere in London. It's gonna be a big event, that's gonna be in May either the end of April or two fights in May, it's going to be enormous for the heavyweight division again, and hopefully towards the end of the year, we'll get this heavyweight undisputed title. It's all bygone now. It's, it's in the past what happened over those three or four months of negotiations. Um, Joshua's made his decision. Eddie Hearn is probably gutted he didn't win the purse bid because um, he, he could have had control. Um, but the old school won it. Frank Warren won it. Bob Aaron won it. You know, they are the old school, and I'm glad that at least we've got these two heavyweight fights. And I'm going round and round in circles here and I'm saying nothing. <laughs> and my last question is, I just spoke to Eddie. So just in your opinion, how many buys does Fury White do on BT Sport box office? I'm just referring to the UK market. He said 700 to 800K, thoughts? Yeah, I agree with that, seven or 800,000 buys. Um, if they really promote the hell out of it with a press tour, that could get more people. Um, if things happen that they do that push it out further into the mainstream, if enough marketing is put behind it, the other way I think they could go, and it wouldn't surprise me, Umar, is that if they got Sky Sports box office involved as well and shared it with BT Sport, and then you could promote through both channels. Well, just on the, I believe, um, I said this to Eddie as well, that this could increase sales, is that the, the BT Sport box office will have exclusive rights on the fight, but the, the red button access will be there, so you won't have to sign up to BT. But he believes that's been always there anyways for BT box office fights. Has. has it? Yeah, I think it has. It's not unknown, remember, for rival broadcasters in the States to show the biggest fights. Mayweather and Pacquiao um, had all the broadcasters involved. McGregor and, um, and Mayweather had all the broadcasts involved. I think it makes sense. I think, I think you can get close to 1.2 million if you had both broadcasters involved, BT Sport and Sky Sports Box Office. Why not? Why, I know, or I'll say, behind the scenes, I know they've talked about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Yeah. I've heard rumours about that as well, and the red button thing, etc. We shall find that at a press conference. They'll probably make a confirmation of what that situation is. Uh, Gareth, just back to why we're here today then. Um, April 30th, I spoke to Joe Markoski about this. He said that this doesn't only transcend the women's side of things, this transcends the sport. Do you agree? Well, Senior Vice President of uh, DAZN, um, Joseph Markowski, you know, he knows his onions. I know his way around um, the fight game now. Um, no, I think this is, a, this is very much about a moment in the movement for women's boxing. I don't think it... Um, look, they're both brilliant fighters. They both deserve massive credits for what they've achieved in the sport, the way they carry themselves, their boxing abilities, and the way that they're being together. Um, yeah, look, it's brilliant. Uh, look, this, will, this fight will always be talked about. Taylor vs. Serrano for the undisputed title at Madison Square Garden on April the 30th, 2022. It's huge. It's huge in America and it's huge here. Um, and it's huge in Ireland, obviously. But T Katie's adopted by Britain in lots of ways. She won an Olympic gold medal here. Um, it, it's, you know, we, we've had really, really big fights like this, undisputed titles. But I think what it's, it's finally doing is bringing together uh, two women who can be pushed into the mainstream. It's the mainstream we want to capture with this, not necessarily the, bo the sport of boxing. Let's show how amazing these two characters, personalities, fighters, athletes really are, and they are fighting each other in their prime, and that's what's brilliant. I don't think it matters whether, they're, whether, they're, whether we call it a seismic moment in the sport. It's a seismic moment for women's boxing. That's how I'm seeing it anyway. Gareth, as always, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. We will speak soon. Always my pleasure. Thank you.